Hello, families of Akakik. It's me, Melvin Yates, your neighborhood real estate broker with Exit Flagship Realty. Today, during this Akakik real estate market memo, I'll be sharing with you the five things you need to know about the real estate market right here in Akakik, Maryland, 20607. Plus, I'll give you some national data that's helping drive our local market. Please note that my office has over 160 dynamic agents serving clients like you in DC, Maryland, and Virginia. And we would love to help you put a real estate game plan together. Now, over the last 12 months, the average sales price in all of Akakik has increased by 5.2% to $476,411. During the month of October, the average list price to sold price ratio was roughly 101.4%. This means that sellers actually received about 1.4% above their asking price. But when we look at the third quarter for this year in Akakik, sellers received closer to 2.1% above what they were asking. So this is a sign that things might be slowing down. Now, the average days on market for homes sold in Akakik during October was 11 days, which is far ahead of the county average of 18 days. Keep in mind, this is only for homes that ultimately sold. Now, during the month of October, we had 26 new homes come to market. That means that 26 home sellers listed their home for sale, but we still only have just under four weeks of inventory in Akakik, which means that we still can't keep up with the demand. So sellers, this is a great time to consider taking advantage. As far as home sellers who accepted an offer in the month of October, otherwise known as pending, there were 23 homes that went pending in October. That represents 88% of the 26 homes that were even listed for sale that month, which further demonstrates my point about the demand in Akakik being higher than normal. For my buyers out there, as you can see, there are still homes for sale. 100% of the homes will never sell. So there's still plenty of opportunity for you. Now there were 17 homes that sold in the month of October in all of Akakik. That's up 34.6% more than last month and 22.7% over last year this time. The year to date sold homes in Akakik through January through October of this year are 206 homes. That's an 8.4% increase over the year to date for the same period last year. More homes are selling, but it's still just not enough to keep up with the buyers who want to buy right here in Akakik. Now, before I jump into the national data, which will show you exactly how our local neighborhood is being affected, feel free to schedule a confidential strategy session with me or my team using the link. Text, call, or email me. Now onto the national data. As we're seeing all this increase in sales and appreciation, let's take a quick peek at the 2022 housing projection from a national level. And it all really starts with a conversation on mortgage rates. So let's dive right in and look at this quote from Doug Duncan at Fannie Mae. It says, right now, we are forecast mortgage rates to average 3.3% in 2022, which though slightly higher than 2020 and 2021, by historical standards remains extremely low and supportive of mortgage demand and affordability. So what does all that even mean? Well, just like most of the other experts are projecting, we're seeing a projection of increased mortgage rates. We're seeing that even over the past few weeks, as mortgage rates have on average ticked up above 3%. So as mortgage rates rise, it will cost more to purchase a home, and that's directly tied to home affordability. Mortgage rates, prices, and wages are the three levers for affordability. So if the mortgage rates are projected to rise, it will cost more. But what I love about this quote is the piece about the historical standards. If mortgage rates are ticking up a little bit, though it will cost more, they are still projected to remain historically low and that supports affordability. So that's not only good news for sellers, it's great news for buyers. However, if you're a buyer in this market, you need to understand that you should purchase before mortgage rates rise even higher. Now let's look at the mortgage rate data. This data from Freddie Mac and it shows average mortgage rates going all the way back to 2018. And what you see here is that mortgage rates were roughly just under 5% in 2018. And then they've dropped significantly since then, obviously. And we've basically hit the all time low, the very end of last year, early this year, and then they've started to tick up again. So, but we, what people wanna know is, but where are they headed now? Similarly, as we saw in the quote before, you can see Freddie Mac is saying mortgage rates are projected to rise to roughly 3.6% by this time next year. So as mortgage rates rise, and get higher, it becomes more expensive to purchase a home. And that's what we want to help you as a homeowner understand. If you're thinking of waiting one, two, or three years, 
you may consider buying now because buying before mortgage rates rise is mission critical to an affordability standpoint. Now, mortgage rates aren't the only thing that's gonna rise next year. Home prices are forecast to appreciate as well. So what we're looking for here is home price forecasting for 2022. And as we look at the six industry experts that we follow, they're averaging out to about 5.1% appreciation next year. Now, what does that mean? Well, what we've seen and we've talked about over the past year, home prices have appreciated at record-breaking levels, 10, 20, even 30 plus percent appreciation in some parts of the country. So next year, the forecast is showing continued appreciation, but at a slower or more moderate rate. Now I've used the term deceleration, and as a buyer, you should know that the home prices are expected to continue rising, but at that decelerated rate, which means slower and more moderate. So we are definitely not projecting a decline in prices, but a slower rate of appreciation. That means that it's going to get more expensive to purchase a home, and we want buyers to be able to purchase before home prices rise. But why are they projected to continue appreciating? That's because inventory is still a big challenge. It's still a major question. As we look at the supply and demand conversation again, supply is low and demand is high. And that's going to naturally make prices rise. And this inventory situation won't be solved overnight. We'll still have an inventory challenge next year, but likely softening because builders are coming back on the market, back to the market, building more homes, you know, and we anticipate more sellers to feel less pressure coming out of the pandemic and may be interested at that time in selling their home if they've previously held off. Now, what does this mean for buyers? Of course, buy before prices and mortgage rates rise to maintain that affordability. What does it mean for sellers? We've talked about record-breaking equity over the past year and equity will continue rising as home prices rise. So what we want to make sure that homeowners know is that if you're thinking about making that move two or three years down the road, maybe even sometime next year, doing it before prices rise will help you leverage that equity, make that move up or downsize while you still can lock in that low rate and take advantage of the home price appreciation. You know, I think as we go into next year with prices rising, interest rates rising, it's going to cost more. We need to start talking about the non-financial benefits of homeownership. I wanna talk about that for just a couple of minutes and give you the latest information on what's happening in that area. Don Layton from Harvard University says, homeownership is regarded as causing an improvement in the quality of life of a typical family. It is the most common method for such a family to build wealth that can be used for retirement, other needs, including helping the next generation. It goes on to say such wealth creation therefore provides a major social as well as economic benefit. We've been talking a lot over the last year about the economic benefits with rising prices, equity rising across the country, but let's start to talk about the non-financial benefits and what that's looked like coming, you know, over the last year and a half across the country. Unison just did a report on the state of the American homeowner. The 2021 state of the American homeowner said this, 64% of American homeowners say living through a pandemic has made their home more important than ever to them. 83% of homeowners say their home has kept them safe during the pandemic. No doubt, home has taken on a new meaning for folks. Now, 91% of homeowners say they feel secure or stable or successful owning a home. So home sellers, you have an incredible market with prices that have never been higher and motivated, serious buyers out there. However, there's one thing to consider. People are starting to realize that they can choose from more options now than ever before, and that's just a normalizing of the market, which sounds good to me. And if you're a home seller, you may be thinking it's time to be a buyer yourself and take advantage of the opportunity to move up, move down, or maybe move away. Home buyers will continue to see more appreciation, and with more options come more opportunity. Interest rates are at historically low levels, and history would tell us that this time next year, Real estate will not only be more expensive, but so will mortgage rates. So if you've been thinking about buying or selling real estate, we would love to sit down with you, create a real estate game plan to navigate the challenges and opportunities that we're finding in today's real estate climate. You can schedule a confidential meeting with my team or myself using the link. You can also text, call, or email me directly. I'll see you again soon.